if you found yourself over the last few years in lots of short-term relationships that don't last, even though what you really crave is to attract your ideal life partner, you might be unconsciously causing this dreadful cycle. And until you realize how, you'll probably end up repeating this hamster wheel again and again. So what I'd love to do today is shed some light into a rarely talked about reason why this might be happening and offer you a real solution to break free from this pain and attract your true match once and for all. I'd love to start this video talking about the real cause why things happen versus the symptoms of why things happen. So imagine, if you will, that you have a beautiful garden you've been working on for years and one day you wake up, you go outside to drink your coffee and you recognize that there's a few weeds growing in the garden. So you pull them out and then go back inside. A couple days later, you realize that there's even more weeds. You pull them out and then go inside the house and then you feel that you've taken care of the problem. But when you go out again, maybe a week later, there's even more weeds than the first and second time put together. So what's happening here? The problem you're identifying is there are weeds when that's really the symptom. The problem is maybe there's something wrong with the soil. Maybe you're pulling out the weeds without the root. So when you finally give fertilizer to the soil needs and you pull the root out of the weed, then lo and behold, the problem gets solved, but not until then. So why am I talking about this? Because many women that I've had the blessing of connecting with are looking at the symptom versus the root cause. And the symptom may look something like, I keep choosing the wrong men. I go in too quickly. I lose myself in the relationship. I can't identify red flags. I get breadcrumbed. I get love bombed. So even though there's some strategy around it, there's a deeper reason sometimes, many times, most times, why this keeps happening. What I'm really talking about right now, today in this video, is how new relationships and the feeling of a honeymoon and the feeling of excitement and newness and adventure that takes place when you first connect with someone can sometimes be the subconscious mechanism we have to assuage our chronic feeling of shame. So let's be real, our culture is inundated with shame. And to quote the great Brenner Brown, who's probably done more research on shame than most people on this planet, shame is an intensely painful feeling or experience of believing that we are flawed and therefore unworthy of love and belonging. How does this take place in women specifically? Well, there's an impossible standard, my dear, for you to meet that makes you feel unworthy constantly. For example, you are supposed to have the wisdom of an elder, but the looks and the firmness of an eight-year-old. You're supposed to have both the capacity to kick ass at work and make things happen, but have a lot of emotional depth to open up and feel vulnerability and empathy and kindness. You're supposed to be fiercely independent, but at the same time connect with someone and open your heart and feel like there's a need for that human being. So what happens when you have lots of areas in your life where you feel like you cannot meet the impossible standard that's placed upon you by society. You start creating this fictitious idea that you're not enough, that you're not worthy, that you're not lovable. If you couple that with the experience of witnessing around you relationships that seem to be great and watching from all sources, including Hollywood, examples of impossible loves to experience in your own life, deep passion, compatibility, great communication, love, empathy, and you see around you that your friends are in relationships, but you can't be in one for whatever reason, you haven't figured out why, then there's the feeling that there's something wrong with you. There's a feeling that there's something missing in you. There's a feeling that there's something that you are less than someone else. And when that takes place, one way that many human beings, and this is not exclusive to women, men do this too, to assuage the feeling of I'm not worthy, I'm not good enough, so let's connect with someone for two reasons. One, because you feel like that's the problem, and two, because the connection with someone, the feeling of intense, passionate excitement, infatuation, which may not be love, but feels like love, of the early connection in a relationship creates a biochemical storm in your brain akin to doing drugs that temporarily makes you stop feeling that feeling of shame. It's almost as if something takes over your body, mind, and soul, and for a brief moment, and that brief moment might last two or three months, you feel different, you feel like a teenager, you feel like happy and excited. And then lo and behold, when that feeling lessens in intensity, when those hormones simmer down to their natural level, when the honeymoon period ends, you get the feeling that you're not with the right person, you recognize some red flags that you missed out on, and then the cycle of shame continues again. You feel 
I'm not good enough, I'm stupid, I'm not caught up for relationships. Whatever it is you're telling to yourself in that moment creates a deeper feeling of shame, so the relationship ends, and then you're out seeking another relationship that allows you temporarily to block that feeling of not being worthy getting the validation from the outside instead of from the inside. And I want to make sure that you understand that this doesn't mean there's something wrong with you. You might just be going about the wrong solution. A recent study in the Journal of Behavioral Pharmacology talks about how passionate love or infatuation and drug addiction have similar neurological patterns. In both cases, there's an activation of the dopamine system in areas that are associated with reward, with prediction, with craving, and with euphoria. And in both cases, passionate love or that intense feeling of the honeymoon and the feeling of a drug addiction, they're characterized by obsessive behavior, obsessive thinking, craving, risk-taking behavior, and also withdrawal symptoms. So think about it this way. When you enter a relationship at the beginning, you are experiencing something very similar to what a drug addict experiences. And that numbing agent, which both feels exhilarating and then you can detach yourself from your problems, is part of the challenge that you're experiencing right now. It's hard to break free from new relationships when on the background you're getting something that's helping you feel less unworthy. So now that we get this, how do we solve this? I'm gonna share four ways you can start healing this, but before I do, I'd love to invite you to take a free quiz that I've created. And this is gonna help you understand more specifically for you what your blind spots are and what is the true reason you are still single. So what I've done is I've taken over 12 years of helping women in every continent with every love challenge you can imagine to attract their ideal life partner and put it together in a simple quiz you can take in about 60 seconds. All you have to do if you want to find out the reason, the number one reason why you're still single is go to the first link in the description of this video. You'll see a page that looks like this. Answer a few simple questions and in 60 seconds you'll have two things. Number one, the answer to the question why you're still single. And number two, a report that's gonna share with you what's the number one thing you can do today to reverse this trend and attract the guy you want in a fraction of the time. So how do you solve this? The step number one is the first step I recommend to my private clients, which is let's put a pause on dating. Why? Because I want you to take one step back to take 1,000 steps forward. Sometimes if you just continue dating without recognizing and healing some of the things that are making you go into the wrong relationships to begin with, then you're bound to be in that hamster wheel I spoke about again and again. When you take a pause on dating, you work on yourself, and there's multiple ways of working on yourself. One might be what you have attempted already, like self-discovery, books and videos. There's other ways, there's support groups, there's therapy, there's coaching, and depending upon where you are on the spectrum, one of those might be better for you, but there's something really powerful about getting help and not attempting to do this on your own. Number two, I'd love for you to start figuring out ways to raise the intensity of your life in a healthy way. Why? Because if you don't do that, then you're bound to go through those drug addictive states of being in a new relationship, that becomes your oxygen. If you find out ways to increase intensity in healthier ways in your own life that don't depend on men, when a guy shows up that's a flashy object, you don't feel like there's a night and day difference between your current experience and what he brings to the table. You feel grounded, you feel excited, you feel passionate, and then if he brings something above and beyond what you're experiencing, you might consider it. If he doesn't, if he's a distraction, if he's the flashy object that's gonna help you feel horrible later but good in the moment, like a drug, then it's easier, not easy, but easier to say no thanks. Third is, and to quote the great therapist Terry Real, self-esteem is your capacity to recognize your worth and value despite your human flaws, mistakes, and weaknesses. So how do you do this? How do you recognize the difference between you flawed as a human being and something being broken in you and the behavior that you're going through? Well, every time you go into this cycle where you start questioning your greatness, your worth, your capacity, you recognize that it's not you, it's your behavior. There's a difference between saying, I am flawed and no one can love me to the strategy I use to connect with men isn't serving me. One, something wrong with you. The other one, something you can change. And the fourth step is going to be to learn to evaluate and look at love as a skill versus a feeling, versus an experience. Why? Because in this day and age, we have higher standards and expectations of love than at any point in human history, but the level of skills we have for attraction, for communication, for sustaining a relationship, for repairing the inevitable interactions that will take place again and again within that relationship, 
the skills aren't there necessarily, but our goals and our ambitions are. It's almost like we have this entitled feeling of what a relationship should be like without having to pay the price of learning how to be in a healthy relationship. So when you start turning the tables of love as a feeling, as a natural feeling to love as a skill, then you recognize that if there's something you're not experiencing, you can learn how to love yourself better. You can learn how to love somebody else better. You can learn how to meet needs in healthier ways. And when you change from the flawness of your being to the behavior that's gonna help you get what you want, you're in the right path of getting what you want. Hope this is helpful and useful and insightful. And if it is, it would mean the world to me if you click like and subscribe to this channel. And if you'd like to continue learning how you can attract the guy you want without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, tricks, or stupid techniques, make sure to watch the next video right here.